Hi guys, in this video, I just wanna check in with you guys and share the top six things that I learned in my first six months of residency. Hi, I'm Dr. Shaw and I'm currently a rural family medicine resident. And on this channel, I share the realities of what it's like being a rural family medicine resident and the strategies and lessons that I learned along my journey. So let's just get right into it. All right, the first thing is that nurses and case managers are your best friends. Do not underestimate their power. Be best friends with them because they can make your life so much easier or so much harder. First tip, nurses and case managers are your friend. They are your superpower. Be really, really nice to them and make sure you know who they are and try to talk to them earlier on in the day and check in with them. For instance, like for nurses especially, I would really, like they see the patient all the time probably more often than you do especially as a doctor or a resident because you're not at the bedside as often as they are so i would really check in with your nurse and make sure that she's aware she or he are, is aware of the plan that you have laid out and if they have any feedback or what their thoughts are because they have a lot of really great insight especially you know with their years of experience it's really good to know and it helps you build that kind of relationship that this is a it's a team sport and you really want to work together with your nurses and your kids Manager. And your case managers, they are very important when it comes to discharging patients because without them, it is impossible to find a good placement for your patient. And ultimately, everyone wants to write the same thing. Everybody wants to make sure the patient is taken care of. So it always is the best thing to just check in with both parties and make sure everyone's on the same page so things run a lot more smoothly and it's just a lot easier. You can make your life up crap ton easier if you get along with them. The second thing I learned, you have the power, and it often doesn't feel that way, to really influence the tone slash the culture of your experiences with very little things. So what do I mean by that? Do not underestimate the power of one person. I know that sounds super cliche, but it's very true. And the thing is that one person can either make the entire team be a lot more fun, or it can make the entire team be the worst. 12 hours that you have had ever. All right, so be the former and not the latter. All right, so you can really change the dynamic of your team by just doing very simple things like playing some music if it's okay with everyone. So I wouldn't just say just start playing music, especially not anything explicit, still a work environment, but just check, be like, hey, you know, is it okay if I play some music? Cause it might be distracting for some people. So you always wanna check in and be considerate. Wiping down the keyboard and mouses. That's something that's my personal favorite to do is I like to go in and wipe down all the mouses and the keyboards because honestly, there's a lot of sick people in the hospital. Not sure if you're aware of that, but there are. And um, it's always important to make sure that your health and the health of your coworkers is optimized as much as possible. Cause you don't really want to get sick and you don't want your coworkers to get sick. So that's something I like to do. It's not a big deal, but it's something that I think changes the mood and puts everyone in a little bit better mood. Another thing is just, you know, I think a lot of people do this, but you know, bring cookies or just bring something and just make the entire environment fun. Just because you're there for a billion hours a day doesn't mean that you have to hate your life, okay? And you can always make things a lot more fun. Moving on to the next point, laughter is the best medicine, truly. I would say one of the biggest things I learned is that you should take your work seriously, obviously, but don't take yourself too seriously because residency is stressful and there's nothing worse than beating down on yourself when you're trying to learn something new and there's a very steep learning curve, you're going to make mistakes. That's, it's it's gonna happen. You are, you are. That's why you're in residency, right? You don't need to take yourself too seriously. Try to laugh it off whenever you make a mistake and try to be better, but don't be too hard on yourself and beat yourself up about it, okay? Just let it go and just laugh it off. Just laugh it off. <laughs> All right, and on that note, the next thing that I would say, so I guess we're at number four. Fourth thing that I learned is that do not underestimate the power of doing any sort of movement for 10 minutes. Like I was one of those people like in the camp that believed that, yeah, like doing 10 minutes is equivalent to doing nothing, like in terms of exercise. But that's not true and I was very, very wrong. <laughs> I think that even if I did like 10 minutes of exercise, the days that I did do it, I felt like I was in a much better mood than the days that I didn't do it. So I would really say don't underestimate the power of that. And I think one of the books I actually learned that from 
little sidebar was Atomic Habit and the power of 1% and just trying to be better by 1%. That's it, just 1%. And I think having that in perspective, you know, it makes it a lot easier and it makes it a lot more feasible. So keep that in mind, try to do at least 10 minutes a day. Sometimes, you know, it's just not possible and that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it, but just try your best to have at least 10 minutes, that's it. Whether it's a brisk walk or yoga or some sort of exercise or running or whatever you like to do, just do 10 minutes. All right, okay, so on that note, fifth, number five. The fifth thing I learned is <laughs> residency is hard and some days are just gonna suck. It ju they just are, honestly, they just are no matter what you do, no matter how much you try to optimize situations, no matter how much you can like laugh about it, whatever, some days are just gonna suck and it could suck for a whole bunch of different reasons and there's just no way around it. So the best thing that you can do is just embrace it, accept it, and accept that it's gonna suck. <laughs> accept that some days are just gonna be bad. And if you just let that in whenever, and they will happen, when when they do happen, you're a little bit more ready for them and it's easier to just, you know, not get knocked down so forcefully. You probably will get knocked down, probably will. That's just residency. You can't prepare for it. There's only so much you can prepare for. You're gonna get knocked down, but it hurts a lot less if you are anticipating it versus if the rug just gets pulled out of, from under your feet. Two very different situations. So some days are gonna suck, just accept it. And then when they do suck, you're okay with it. And it's easier to move forward to the next day. You just take whatever you can as a learning lesson and just move forward. Number six. Last but not least, don't take things too personally. Whether it's with your coworkers or your patients, hospitals are a very high stress environment and sometimes people get just get frustrated and it's not always because of you and it's even though it feels like it's directed at you, it's not always directed at you. So it's very easy to take things personally, especially when you yourself are really tired and you're feeling overworked and you're feeling like maybe burnt out. You know, in those moments, you need to just take a step back and be like, you know what, maybe this isn't really about me. Maybe this is about the person that is doing the exploding because they had a rough day or something happened to them that they feel that they need to, you know, unleash or they're just, you know, going through something. So it's always better if you just don't take things too personally, don't take criticism to heart and just take it in stride because it makes things hell of a lot easier to deal with if you're not feeling like your personal core is being attacked every time someone gets upset at you because sometimes it's not about you. I would say most times it's not about you, but I digress. Anyways, so those were the six biggest things that I learned in the first six months of residency. Um, I hope that you enjoy that and see you in the next one.